you will learn about natural vegetation and wildlife. Natural vegetation and wildlife are the plants and animals that survive naturally in a specific region. Natural vegetation and wildlife are part of the biosphere. The biosphere is the narrow zone where the lithosphere, the hydrosphere and the atmosphere interact with each other. In the biosphere, living beings are related to each other as well as dependent on each other for survival. The biosphere, in turn, is composed of ecosystems. An ecosystem refers to the natural surroundings in which living beings and non-living beings support each other. For example, the trunk of baobab tree is swollen and oddly shaped as it collects water during the wet months and stores it for the dry season. Many animals as well as human beings take shelter in its trunk and also eat its fruits. The plant life of a region is an important natural resource. Plants and trees provide timber for human use, shelter to animals, oxygen for us to breathe, protection to the soil, storage for underground water, and various articles such as fruits, nuts, latex, gum, oil, medicine and paper. Did you know oil obtained from the eucalyptus tree is used as a medicine for colds and as an insect repellent? Even the Brahma Kamal plant found in the Himalayas, has medicinal uses as per Tibetan medicine. It is used as a cure for paralysis. Let's move on to another component of our ecosystem, wildlife. Here are a few examples of creatures that comprise wildlife. As you can see, Wildlife includes animals, birds and insects, as well as aquatic animals such as fish. How does wildlife interact with the other components of an ecosystem? All birds and animals, regardless of their size, contribute in different ways to maintain the balance in an ecosystem. What are the ways in which wildlife contributes to our ecosystem? Animals provide us with milk, meat, hide and wool. Insects like bees provide us with honey to eat and help in pollinating flowers. Silkworms provide us with silk. They feed on the leaves of the mulberry tree and are dependent on it for survival. Many birds are dependent on insects for food. Birds also have a part to play as decomposers in an ecosystem. In fact, 
birds like vultures are vital for cleansing our environment. They act as natural scavengers as they feed on dead animals. If any of the components of an ecosystem is removed or contaminated, the result can be disastrous. Here is a case study that illustrates this. In the Indian subcontinent, a large number of vultures were dying due to kidney failure. When scientists investigated the cause, they found out that these vultures have been feeding on the bodies of livestock that had been treated with diclofenac, a painkiller. At present, efforts are on to breed vultures in captivity and try and get a ban imposed on the use of diclofenac for livestock. If you travel in India from one region to another, you will notice a change in the type of vegetation. For example, in the desert areas of western India, like Rajasthan and Gujarat, you will find an abundance of the baboon trees. On the other hand, as you move towards eastern India, say to West Bengal, the type of vegetation you see is very different. The natural vegetation in the delta region of West Bengal consists of mangrove trees which look nothing like the baboon trees. Why does vegetation vary across regions? The natural vegetation in an area depends on the temperature and the moisture available. With the change in these conditions from area to area, you will see a change in the vegetation as well. For instance, in an area where there is heavy rainfall, you would see large trees. This is why rainforests are found in Brazil, where there is an abundant supply of water. However, as the moisture in an area reduces, trees become shorter and less dense. Therefore, in areas where there is moderate rainfall, you would typically find short, stunted trees and grasses. These areas form grasslands. The main types of natural vegetation found the world over are forests, grasslands, scrubs, and tundra. In dry regions, the natural vegetation consists of thorny shrubs and scrubs. The plants typical to such areas have long roots that go down deep into the soil in search of water. The leaves are adapted to this climate as well. They have a waxy surface that reduces the loss of moisture through transpiration. In the cold polar regions, such as Alaska, the soil is frozen most of the time and it is impossible for trees to grow. Therefore, the natural vegetation in the tundra regions consists of mosses and lichens. In fact, 
The word tundra comes from the Finnish word tunturia, which means treeless. The growth of vegetation in forests vary from region to region. As you can see, the trees in these forests look quite different. That's because they belong to different types of forests. Forests can be classified into evergreen or deciduous, depending on when the trees shed their leaves. In evergreen forests, the trees do not shed their leaves all at the same time. Therefore, they always remain green. The trees in deciduous forests, however, shed their leaves in the dry season to conserve moisture and prevent loss of water through transpiration. Evergreen and deciduous forests can be further classified into tropical and temperate forests. This classification depends upon the latitude at which the forests are located. The forests that lie within the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn are called tropical forests. Tropical forests can be found in Brazil. The trees in tropical forests form a dense canopy and are mostly evergreen. Temperate forests are found in regions that lie within the Arctic Circle and the Tropic of Cancer and between the Antarctic Circle and the Tropic of Capricorn. The trees in temperate forests form a moderately thick canopy and shed their leaves annually. Each forest type is associated with a certain type of animal life. Over the last few decades, more and more forests have been cleared to make way for growing crops to feed the rapidly growing population. As a result, this valuable natural resource is now getting jeopardized. In fact, the diminishing forest cover all over the world is becoming a source of great concern. Forests are very important to us. We must protect and conserve them.